Morning, everybody. The sky kind of matches the day, doesn't it? It's blue, it's cloudy. It's a rare day here in Las Vegas that the sky looks like this. And uh, today is a rare day. We have Inauguration Day once every four years. And uh, it's an interesting time because the, there's such a huge range of emotion uh, on this Inauguration Day especially. Uh, I've lived through whatever, maybe 12, 13, 14 of them now in my life. Um, but I want to speak specifically about how we can nuance the invitation we often get from pastors to accentuate the positive and minimize the negative and see the glasses half full and not half empty. Uh, that can get actually kind of tiresome when every single day we have to wake up and pretend that we are a living, breathing book by Norman Vincent Peale and uh, that our, everything in the world can be uh, changed for the better and pretty soon that um, if we just think positively. Now, there's great, great truth to the fact that positive thoughts will generate positive outcomes positive response. We've mentioned quantum physics recently on the live streams and that it's a known provable thing now that a thought as invisible as it might be is powerful just like microwaves are also invisible but they're very powerful. We know it is provable that thinking things actually can change outer material realities. So to think positive thoughts knowing that they're going to create a better world is a good way to be. However, we don't want to be saccharine or Pollyanna-ish or kind of phony about it. We don't want to be so, oh, it's such a, you know, while we're watching, you know, if we're having a calamity, our house is burning down, to stand in the front yard and go, oh, well, this was God's will. I'm just thinking now of the better house I'm going to build. Bull. You're not thinking that. You're, you're, you've got to mourn. You've got to feel that you're really sad that the photos inside your house, which you've kept for a lifetime, the only existent photo of your great-great-grandfather is now burning up and there's nothing anything can do about it. Do not deny loss. Make your positive thinking also realistic so that it can truly be wise while it's being positive. That it can be three-dimensional instead of two-dimensional. Your positivity and joy can have depth. Or, said in Christian terms, your resurrections and your redemption knows what crucifixion looks like, knows what pain and broken looks, brokenness looks like. And so I invite everybody today to self-honesty. If there's one unifying something that Democrats, Republicans, uh, independents, even non-politicians have the option of doing today is to take an accounting, I, 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 mean, I mean people who are not political, take an accounting of one's feelings and say, hmm, if there's pain, if there's brokenness, if there's loss, and I know I love people who, are, who were deeply invested in the idea of four more years of a Donald Trump presidency, good people who were passionately invested in that hope, who are unhappy today. And they can even compound that by saying that there wasn't a valid election or something, which by the way is not true. I mean, sorry, facts are facts. There's always a little element of corruption in every election, a slight, you know, a margin of error, 0.001%, Russians vote, dead people vote. But um, this election and the last one were both valid, and the one before that, and the one before that. And generally, they're getting more closely watched. The, all the institutions of government are looking more carefully than ever. So to say an election's fraud is, um, what's that called? Falsehood, like the earth is flat. But anyway, you can still feel loss and pain and mourn that the thing you hoped for didn't happen. But this is not to take away from faith. 
And it's also an opportunity, this is what true, positive, wise thinkers do, is they know that God is always in charge, that God did not betray them here. There's something here that is going on which will reveal itself in time. It's okay to be angry at God, but you wanna keep that brief because God needs to finally have the final word with us and let us know what's really going on. So it's another opportunity for healing and wisdom, which is part of true positivity. Anyway, that's what I got for today, this inauguration day. If you find yourself uh, hurting, uh, maybe breathe extra right then and say, God, may your will be done, even if you don't know what that is. God does, though. And ask for greater peace and uh, comfort from God if you really need consolation. Ask God how you best live that out. And um, people who are really happy about who's getting inaugurated today, let me actually invite you to, to keep in mind that no human being is perfect and that the pendulum looks like it's swinging way back and forth, but some things are utterly constant like how beautiful Las Vegas is and how much your pet and your loved ones love you and how forgiving you are in Christ. These things are constants, 24-7, 365. And so let your temporary joy always be informed by a bigger one because that bigger, truer, deeper, rounder, wider joy is the greater truth. That's what I've got this January 20th. God bless you all. Bye-bye.